Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for being with us today. I know this is going to seem kind of strange because I'm actually not physically here, but I am in spirit. So I am currently uh, in Clinton, Oklahoma, and preaching for the good people at New Hope Fellowship. So thank you for, to this church for allowing me the opportunity to minister. But I just want to say thank you for being here. And I'm trying to help Pastor Jeff all that I can. So I wanted to maybe take some of these preliminaries off of his, um, not to burden him, off of his hands so that he can concentrate on preaching the word to you. I'm excited about what he's got to offer you. And the team here that we have will be able to just minister in song, in music, and in word. So thank you for being here. I just want to uh, reiterate that without you, we cannot be a functional church, so you are important to us. That being said, a couple of things I want to get uh, to you and get information to you, so you know information is knowledge. But before we do that, I want to welcome everybody. And if you're a first-time visitor, we want to welcome you here. And if you're a first-time visitor, we'll need you to raise your hand. I'm going to pause uh, don't be shy. Just pretend I'm here and you're like, who is this guy? Well, I'm me. Raise your hand up high if you're a first-time visitor. And our uh, ushers are going to give you a little, just a little packet. It's just a welcome packet to say thanks for being here. There's a card in there. If you'll put that card in there, we'd love to have your information. 
So all our first-time visitors, thank you for being here as well as online. If you're online and you're with us, thank you, our online family. We can't thank you enough for your support. If you're a first-time online person, type that in. Say, hey, first time. If you're online and you're somewhere, type it in where you're watching us from. Uh, if you have prayer requests, put that on there as well. We appreciate you serving the Lord through our online uh, ministry. So thank you for that. Uh, that being said, we're going to give you a chance to be nice today. Even though I'm not here, uh, Ethan has to orchestrate everything. And I appreciate Ethan and the, the media team of what they are doing. He's allowed me to do this, so we want you to be nice to each other. See, I was just nice to our media team. Let's give our media team a great big hand clap. Yeah, they deserve it. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to pause me for a second, and we're going to put 92 seconds on the clock. And what we want you to do is we want you to go around, and we want you to find somebody. Say hi to them and say, you look good today. And as you do, you know, you'll make a new friend. So remember, be nice. This is just the start and the catalyst today. That being said, 92 seconds on the clock. Hit it! All right. Thank you for being nice to one another. All right. Thank you for being nice to one another. Remember, this is just to start your week. You should be nice all week long. Uh, so you find your find your way back. Have a seat. Thank you for doing that. Uh, it's always good to be nice. As Frank Burns said one time, it's nice to be nice to the nice. Of course, Margaret looked at him and said, nice to be nice to the nice. And he goes, <laughs> anyway, all you MASH fans, glad you're with me there. All right. Listen, we got announcements. Uh, they are this. They're on the board. I can't make all these announcements for you. First of all, I'm not even sure y'all pay attention to me sometime. And y'all like, move out the way. Listen to the music. Hear the preaching. Why are you up there? 
that hurts my heart. But hopefully you don't say that. But we do have announcements. They're on the board. Not a lot this week other than normal service. Normal, normal services today. Okay? And all through this week. So remember service not only today with the service. We have our kids in service today. Thank you for being here. Kids Church, all you kids being in here. I know you usually have your own service, but we like to have you part of our service. So thanks for being in service with us. These kids are having a fundraiser. It's called uh, Send a Soda. Last week, y'all heard me bring Melissa up, but we uh, we can appreciate all that you do. I don't think that's what it was, but I can't remember. You put a pep in my step, Pepsi, something like that. Uh, hey, uh, Sprite. Uh, no, 7-Up, you, you the wind beneath my wings. Something, but if you need these, these are $2 for one, or you could get three for $5. That's a bargain. Send it to somebody. Help make them, uh, have them make a special day for them, okay? That's another way to be nice if you want to do that. Remember that. That's coming up. Uh, with that, we have uh, all of our announcements are back at the board. If our leaders have announcements, they'll, they'll put that. Hey, I do want to give a shout-out to our men's fellowship. We had, uh, sorry, we had uh, um, men's fellowship breakfast yesterday morning. Had 24 men in attendance, so yeah, that was a great crowd, and uh, Brother David Owens gave a word for us, so appreciate all of you men that were in attendance. Pastor made a conversation piece on Wednesday when he tried to invite the women, and uh, that didn't go over well. You can't have a he-man woman hater club as a men's breakfast if you invite women. Now, I know what you're saying. He's not even here and still joking about it. Well, listen, we, we love the women being involved, but men's fellowship, we just needed to have that. Uh, so it worked out great. We gave pastor a hard time, uh, but we love our pastor, so don't give him too hard time. Um, praise the Lord for that. Thank you for all your men showing up for that. Appreciate it. All right, with that being said, we're going to bring our ushers up at this time. They're going to come to you for our tithes and our offering. And as they do, they'll be able to put the ways to give on the screen. Uh, I'm going to step out, and then I'm going to leave that right here for y'all uh, because we want to take up the time that we have to do prayer requests. So the prayer requests, if you have a, a prayer request, we want you to raise your hand, and I'm going to step aside. And then I'm going to give that to uh, Pastor. He's going to come right up. He's going to pray over the offering as well as our prayer request. So if you have a prayer request, raise up your hand. Uh, remember, as you do, look around, find somebody, and be in prayer for them this week. All right? So Pastor's going to come up. You should be having your hand up. He's going to let you know about the offering. But keep your hand up. Start looking around. He'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you. Pray for me during the service today. I appreciate that. Can't wait to see you. I'll be back Wednesday night. Uh, for those of you here last Wednesday, we talked about the works of the flesh. This Wednesday, we're going to talk about fruits of the Spirit. So come back and enjoy that. With that, we're going to bring Pastor up. He's going to pray over you and the needs of the church. We love you, and y'all have a great day. Okay, there you go. Just checking. All right. Don't really, you guys, look around and find somebody to pray for this week. And, and don't forget to pray for me. You can put your hands down. Thank you. Uh, I'm so glad you guys are here this morning. Good to see everybody. Glad to have our kids in service. Man, I love our kids. I told Naomi, I said, just stop and just listen. It was so loud. I love it. I absolutely love it. It was so loud in the sanctuary. It is full of life. I just love it, man. I just love it. So just just listen. Just listen. Love having our kids here. Love having our kids workers in the house today. So that way they, our kids pastor, kids workers, everybody that's here. Thank y'all for being here. Hey, we're going to pray over the offering. And if you don't know what offering is all about, let me just give you a little synopsis. Offering isn't about your little green slips of paper or your check or your digital currency or whatever it is. It's not about that. Offering is about obedience. Tithe and offering, two different subjects. 
tithe is the first fruits of, my, of what I get. It's a, what God provides for me when I go to work every day. He, God provides us a great job, and he provides me money. That's why I, I, I tithe off of that. I give God 10% of that right off the top, regardless. Well, where does that come from? I'll tell you where it comes from. When shepherds, would, when, the, when the men would give tithe of their sheep, they would give the first sheep, not knowing they were going to get any more, but they gave the first one. God, in order for God to bless the rest. Come on, somebody. For offering, what is offering? Well, offering is anything above the top. Offering. What are offerings? Offerings are given to the church to help us function. Offerings are given to individuals to help them in, in situations and needs. Offerings are saying, I'm going to sacrifice because God sacrificed for me. Let's go back to the little green slips of paper. Little green slips of paper that we have numbers on that we call currency. You say, for example, I'll, I'm going to work 40 hours a week for this company for $1,000. You've offered, you've given, a, you've given 40 hours of your life for $1,000. And all God asks is, how much of that are you going to give back to me? You're not giving green slips of paper, you're giving your life. If you don't look at it that way, you're looking at it wrong. Because I'm not looking, God doesn't need your money. He's got, tr- listen, we got streets of gold to walk on. He don't, you know, he don't need green slips of paper. That's not what it's about. As Jesus was leaning up against the wall, watched the widow put in her two mice, and she, he said she gave more than any of these rich people because she gave out of her out of her lack. What she didn't have, she gave out of her love for God instead of her abundance in her life. So as you give, I just want you to understand this, that, that giving is not so I can get rich. I'm not getting rich. I promise you. Uh, it's not so anybody else can get rich. I promise you nobody in the church is getting rich. We're, we're, not, we're not doing that. But we are meeting needs of the, of the community. We are meeting needs of the church, and we are meeting needs of our people. And God is good, and you guys have blessed us. I, I know Billy and, and Ethan didn't do a, a, a chart this time because Billy's not here. But, man, I just want you guys to know we've paid over $168,000 off and up since September. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. So if you would, would you bow your head with me and ask God to bless this offering with me today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you right now and ask that you touch every need in this house. God, for all the hands that were raised, we pray for every need in the house. For every offering that, that is given from every individual, God, we pray that you touch their lives, hundredfold blessing on everything that they are able to give. Father, if there's someone here today saying, I wish I could give, but I just don't have, God, you'll give them the seed to plant. Let them plant it in the seed, in the ground. Let that seed become a harvest, and out of the harvest, they can give out of their plenty and not out of their lack. And, Father, we are so thankful for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. Give us unto the Lord. All right, let's stand and go into worship. remember last week when I said these two crazy trains always got to do some kind of cheer or whatever when we're practicing? Well, they did it again. So uh, so that uh, y'all don't think I'm lying, they're going to perform this cheer and watch. They're probably going to get, uh, oh no, no, they don't got stage fright, see? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Well, can everybody see y'all down there? No, go back up on stage. All right. They're going to do it, and then y'all going to do it, okay? <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> they so dumb. <laughs> Yeah, see? Now y'all will be doing that at home when you go home. I know you will. Y'all think it looks dumb now, but when you go home, that's what you're going to be thinking. Go, we go, we go. Okay. Just don't do it while we're singing, okay? <laughs> that's all I ask. <laughs>
don't you feel so much better when you lay your burdens down? Why do we carry them for so long? I don't understand it. I, I'm speaking to myself. I carry them too. It's like all God asks us to do is just lay them down and give them to him. He'll take care of the rest, right? Y'all believe that this morning? Okay.
child of God. Yes, I am. I, who the Son has set free is free indeed. If we could just get a hold of that. Not be bound by what is facing us each day. But truly get a hold of what God wants to do in our lives. Amen.
we make room for him this morning as we sing that again? Make room for whatever you want to do, Lord. Do you truly believe that? Make room for whatever you have for me, Lord. Are we singing that with our heart? Or are we just singing that with our lips this morning? Make room for whatever you want to do, Jesus. Fill us, Lord. Lead us, guide us, God. As we sing that this morning, sing it with all your might. Sing it with all your heart. I will make room for you.
place. I feel Jesus in this place. Yes, my soul does. Burn. Does it burn this morning? Does your soul burn this morning for what God wants you to do, what God would have you to do for your lost loved ones? Yes, my soul. Yes, my soul. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. In this place. Oh, yeah. 
Hallelujah. Does anybody feel Jesus in the place? Come on, somebody. Woo! Nellie just gave her heart to the Lord, man. Somebody ought to worship. Man. I'm so proud. Listen. Listen. It wasn't no repeat of prayer after me either. It was, I came, she came to the altar. I saw her run to the altar. I was like, go get her, God. Amen. God is good. Amen. You can be seated for just a second, guys. Just hang on for a second. Y'all don't run off yet. This is why we have that Sunday with all the kids out here. Not that they're not doing a wonderful job in the back teaching our kids and, and loving on our kids. But they need to be in the atmosphere of God. And our workers and our leaders need to be in the atmosphere of God. God is good, man. God is good. God is good. God is good. I got a little bit of housekeeping I need to do real fast. And, uh, and I'll leave you alone and I'll pre I'm going to preach. And, and, and I'm, I may not be the pastor here next week, but I'm going to preach anyway. Uh, no, it ain't. Y'all say, uh oh, like, like I didn't hear from the Lord or something. Okay, there, listen. Um, for those that don't know, um, Richard and Katrina uh, lost a son this week. Um, their son, Casey, passed away. He was 36 years old. And uh, that's, that's Katrina's second child she's lost in the last seven years. And so just be in prayer for her. Um, talked to him this morning. Um, talked to him a couple times this week. Talked to him this morning. And uh, they said they don't need a thing. They just need you to pray for them. And uh, I said, you guys are easy to take care of. Y'all don't need nothing. And uh, he said, we're just kind of self-sufficient. And uh, But just pray for Richard and Katrina as they're walking through this. And I don't know any details about any service or anything. I have no idea. So uh, as soon as I find out, I'll let you know. Uh, but Katrina lost her daughter seven years ago. So just remember them in prayer. Uh, also, um, this is things that, that Billy wasn't do, didn't do in the video, but uh, we have a group leaders meeting. If you lead a group uh, next Sunday after church, 1230 after church, we're going to meet uh, for just a short time. I'm not keep, I'll try to get you out of here by 1. If you guys get there at 1230, we'll get out by 1. Y'all lollygag around, we'll get out at 130. So I'll just let you know. So uh, so your group leaders, if you, if you lead a group, if you're the men's leader, women's leader, widow's leader, sewing leader, Whatever leader, youth leader, or kids pastor, whatever. If you lead, okay, you lead a group, I need you there, okay? Uh, next Sunday at 1230 for just a few minutes. Um, this next coming up a year, we have new leaders coming up. We've got a new group starting next year. This year it's going to be really good. And uh, uh, I'm not really there to unveil that just yet, but we have a new group. I think it's going to be a blessing. And it's a new year, man. New year. If you are in this house and you are a mother of babies, now when I say babies, five years or below. Would you stand up? Look at this, man. You telling me? Give them a hand, man. Thank you. Thank you. How about your mom and you got little kids? <laughs> April, stand up. <laughs> They're like, yes, I do. Like, I see this line of boys. I think, Lord, she didn't sleep last night at all. Amen. So the Lord blesses. Riker had a birthday. His birthday party, he's asleep on the pew. <laughs> uh, Riker, Zara had a birthday. Jess had a birthday. Abby had a birthday. Sabrina had a birthday. Let's see who else had a Landon had a birthday. I got them written down here, but I didn't do a very good job. Um, let's see. Sabrina Landon. Yeah. You guys have a, anybody else have a birthday? Logan had a birthday. Uh, who else? You had a birthday? Last week, that's right. So if you would, we're going to sing happy birthday to y'all. So are ready? We're singing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear all y'all. Happy birthday to you. Yes, 29. All right, good job, Jess, good job. I mean, so I just wanted to share that with you, and I want to share a couple other things with you before we get started into another uh, thing that we're going to do here today. Um, I'm going to trade you, honey. I need my tablet, and I'm going to give you that, just in case you want to preach it. Oh, 
Just in case she wants to preach. She might she might break out. You never know. She might. Somebody besides me can get it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> somebody, somebody besides me can get a hand, get a get an ear full. Amen. Um listen. Oh no, so let me say. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I, hey Darren, uh, brother in law Darren. I was just looking around and I'm thinking, man, wouldn't Brother Turner be proud? Hmm. Just look at me. Outlive yourself. Every one of us. Except for, you know, Brandon, he's the outlier. Brother Owens is proud of him, okay? But <laughs> I'm very proud of Brandon. Felt good to play guitar today, didn't it? <laughs> Man, I just love y'all. Y'all, we're good. We're good right now. Thank you. Um, man, I just, I was just thinking about that, Darren. I thought I, he'd be proud. He'd be so proud. Says, outlive yourself. You know, he's been gone three years, and um, so three years this year, and uh, I think three years last year. I think I can't remember. I think it's three years. Uh, I'm still mad at him for dying because I still need to talk to him sometimes. And so um, I bet he doesn't care. But anyway, that I'm mad at him. Uh, guys, for just a few minutes, um, I just want to talk to you for a little bit um, about what God's got going on, man. It's uh, time for a riot. Um, Billy made me mad last week. How did he make any of y'all mad? Y'all don't even know. Some of y'all forgot what he preached. Y'all thought he preached about something that made you laugh. You know, I, you know, I love it because uh, Billy, he tries to be, he's going to be all serious. And then he'll break out in five jokes in a row. Like, because he can't help himself, you know. And uh, that's just how he is. That's how he's wired. Um, you know, he's got, he got the arrows and he's, and he's slamming the arrows down and one breaks. He said, oh, I was going to take those back. Nobody says that. No, nobody says that, but he does. And so anyway, so just let you know, um, did it, did, it, did you get riled up a little bit last week? Did, did it come out in your life? Did, did you get a little oof, sick of the devil? Did, you just, did, did something in you go, you know, that guy's right. That guy's right. I haven't gotten mad yet. I've just been irritated. But I haven't been mad yet. I've just been bothered, but I haven't been mad yet. I'm still going to write my book. I haven't, I haven't started it yet, but I'm working on it. I don't know how to do it. but, I, I, but it, The inconvenience of the lost. Because the church, we're inconvenienced by lost people. So we don't reach out to lost people because it's an inconvenience. I ain't going to move. I'm, it's an inconvenience. So I just, I just feel like it's time for a riot. It's time for somebody to just get up in arms a little bit. And don't leave just yet because I've got a video I want to show you, okay? Don't, don't check out on me just yet. Ethan, you ready? Thank you, Brother Ethan. This is not Billy.
I know you? Ooh. Do I know you? Can you imagine? I just left church. Do I know you? I, I just left prayer meeting. Do I know you? I just left worship practice. Who are you? I just left my group. Do I know you? Mm -hmm. I saw that. That tore me up, man. Because I got all sucked in. He's my God. He's my rock. He's my blood. Do I know you? Time for a riot. Listen, don't you leave yet. Listen, put, just put your phone away. Put your phone away. Stop playing with the babies for just a moment. Can I have your attention, please, for just a moment? It's time to put away Christianity as the world says we must do it. Because we are supposed to be kind and we're supposed to be meek and we're supposed to be lowly. I do not disagree that we are supposed to be meek and lowly for Jesus was. But I do uh, disagree on us being weak and lowly. I do not believe that the church is supposed to be a weak entity that lets the world do as they fairly well please as we sit by and watch them on a road to hell. It's time to put away Christianity as we are supposed to be doing it. It's time for the church to rise to the occasion. My God in heaven, rise to the occasion. It's time for the church to rise. We've sat idly by as the world has lost its mind. And we sit in the church waiting for Jesus to come. Oh, somebody better help me today. And seemingly we have not lifted up a serious prayer. Oh, God, touch us. Oh, God, bless us. Oh, God, keep us. Oh, God, that. But where's the man and woman of God putting their finger in the face of the devil and say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus? Stop it. Stop your advance. Stop it in the name of Jesus. Where are the men and women of God who stood up and said, I will not let you go one moment further. Not one more foot, devil. Not one more battle will you lose. Will I lose because of my, regard, my disregard for what God's word says. Not one more battle should I say there without screaming in the face of the devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you. You shall not have my family. You shall not have my people. Come on, somebody. Where are you? In Acts chapter 17, verses 6 through 8, please listen to me. This is who we need to be. Come Acts chapter 16, I believe it is, 17, sorry, 6 through 8. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren and the rulers of the city crying, these that have turned the world upside down come hither also. We are the ones who are supposed to turn the world upside down. Verse 8, please, if you will. And verse 8, I think it's there. Did I say 8? I'm sorry. Yeah. 6, I'm sorry, 6. I'm sorry. And they have found them not, and let's go to 7. Oh, that's my fault. And Jason received, and all these do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king. They say there is another king, one Jesus. Go to verse 8. Verse 8, please, thank you. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these sayings, these things, these things. It troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. What things? That they did contrary to what the world said they should do. And they claim there's another king, and his name is Jesus, and they turned the world upside down. It's time for a riot. It's time for us to quit sitting on our blessed assurances and start doing something for which God can absolutely change the world. And seemingly, not send a serious prayer or scream at the devil to stop his advances. It seems as though we'd rather duck and cover than run to the battle. It's easier, isn't it? Isn't it easier? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. 
Come on now. Mm -hmm. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine, and I'm going to keep him right here with me. Because I know I'm saved, I'm saved, and I'm set free. Oh, but there's somebody out there crying. Oh, but there's 6,000 people in Seminole, Oklahoma today that aren't in a church service. There's 6,000 people in the surrounding, 10,000 people in the surrounding area that don't call Christ their king. There's 10,000 people around us, round about us that don't know anything about Jesus. Ah, oh, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And we're waiting for God to do something. I don't know what we're waiting for God to do, but it's time for us to quit ducking and covering and start running to the battle of, of, against the devil. What is the battle? I'm so glad you asked. Well, what battle? Good versus evil? Well, not really, but kind of. God versus Satan? No, not really, because that battle's already been won. That battle's, that, that, that battle's non-existent. That's like saying we're fighting the Nazis still. That battle was, that thing's been done 80 years. The men that fought that battle have been dead for 20. Help me somebody. Help me somebody. That battle has been won. We're grappling for the souls of humanity. Humanity's souls are what we're fighting for. We're not seeing if God is going to win a battle. What's that old song? You may lose a battle now and then, but he's already won the war. Anybody remember that song from the 80s? Mm. We're not hoping that he can pull out a last second win. He's not throwing a Hail Mary to try to win. He's already won the battle. He's already won. He's, this, this battle is over. My God, this thing's been over for a long time. Somebody ought to help me just a little bit. Don't leave me out here by myself. Come and preach with me today for just a second. We are in this battle for the souls of humanity and the soul of the church. The church. Come on, church. Jesus, help me and help the church. Ephesians 6 and 12 reads this way. I can't see because of the glare. 6 and 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Does anybody understand? We don't wrestle against sinners. We wrestle against the spirit of the devil. Come on, somebody. I don't, listen, I don't have anything against the sinner. I have, a, I have something against a body of believers that will not fight the devil. That cower in a corner and quit when it gets hard. I have something against that. I don't have anything against a sinner. Listen, I, can I just share this with you? Uh, I, an alcoholic's going to smell like alcohol until he gets changed. A dope fiend's going to smell like dope until he gets changed. A prostitute's going to look like a prostitute until she gets changed. I have nothing against them. I have something against the devil. I'm not fighting the sinner. I'm fighting the spirit of the devil that has been loosed on this generation. This generation fights devils like I've never seen in my life. This generation has had the, the, the greatest attack of debauchery that in, the, in the history of mankind and the weakest church to fight it. I'll say it again for the hearing impaired. This generation, the generation that is coming up right now, those boys sitting on the pew, Riker's sleeping, which is, I, I get it. I'm not mad at him. I, I'd be asleep too if I was his age. Okay, here we go. I'd be asleep right now if I was somewhere else. Okay, here, let's, let's, listen. That generation has faced the most debauchery, and I'm a child of the 70s and 80s, and you want to talk about decade of decadence, baby. The 80s was a decade of decadence. Well, it was. Not the 1880s. Okay, here we go. So listen. So George Michael came out with I Want Your Sex in the 1980s. Remember? Come on, y'all that are my age. Come on. All of us had this, all of us had the cassette. 
Some of y'all still do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Nah, we got we got we got delivered from that, but we bought the we bought the CD afterward. <laughs> I'm not fighting the sinner. You remember the hair metal bands? I remember them quite well. I can't tell you all the all the words of Rock of Ages, the hymnal, but the Def Leppard version I got. Because I'm going to rise up, gather around, <laughs> and rock this place to the ground. Burn it up, I'm going to go for broke. Watch the night go up in smoke. Rock on. Drive me crazy. Yeah, I, I, I'm just letting you know, I got that one. I got that one. Rock of ages, clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee, then I'm done. Okay, I don't know about all, I, I don't know the rest of it. Some of y'all looking at me like, I'm listening to this guy. I'm, I'm just listening, I'm just... I was listening. I'm just telling you. I'm just being real. This generation has had the attack of ungodliness. Well, what do you mean, Brother Jeff? I'll tell you what I mean. When 50% of marriages and churches fail, we're supposed to have, we're supposed to have be different. 50% of marriages and church fail. It's actually gone up since then. It was 50. It's a little higher now. A little higher now. When Christians couple, when Christian couples, y'all are going to get mad at me right here, but I don't care. When Christian couples go to an abortion clinic to end the product of their sin, so nobody will find out. Oh, I know. I, I listen. I, I know. I'm not supposed to talk about that. I, I, I got it. I, I'm not supposed to say anything. Really? Really? That's why the church, right, listen, that's why there ain't no difference in anybody in the church, anybody in the world. Because nobody in the pulpit says anything. No one says, no one says, stop it. No one says, run from sin. Get away from it. Sin will take your soul to hell. But there's very few men in the, in the, and women in the pulpits anymore that are screaming, don't go sin. Sin will take your soul to a devil's hell. I don't care what some slick shoes, shiny head preacher told you. I don't care. I don't care what some dude in some skinny jeans told you or rips in the knees told you. I don't care. I don't care if they had the most awesome kick tail worship band in the history of worship band. I don't care. If he did not tell you that sin will take your soul to hell and that it doesn't matter what you do, what you repeat, a mantra that we've, uh, that we've written down, are you kidding me? Preachers, preach the gospel. Church, live the gospel. I got to move on. Listen, I know I'm not supposed to talk about anything that's controversial. controversial. I get it. I know, I know that makes me unkind and it makes me judgmental. I get it. I get it. I know the church can't handle the truth anymore. I understand that. But I'm not going to stop screaming it until the day I die. I'm not going to stop preaching it until I quit preaching. I'm not going to stop. 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 If I beat my head against the wall, then so be it. I'm still going to not stand before God and say, I was afraid of their faces, so I didn't tell them the truth. I'm going to stand before God and I told them exactly what you told me to say, when you told me to say it, how you told me to say it, and I'm not apologizing. I'm not. I'm saying it exactly as God told me to say it. When many of the church drink socially, are you kidding me? We, would, listen, we couldn't even go to Pizza Hut on Sundays because they served beer. Now, half the church got wine in their house. Got my Jesus juice. No, you got a devil. Mm, I got to go on because I'm about to lose half the church. This generation is screaming out. This generation is screaming out for the church to show what they say they have. Church, we have fallen. We have fallen a long way. We've gone a long way backward because we tried to stroke everybody's ego to get them to come back to church. Instead of tell somebody the truth, we've fallen a long way. When many are so addicted to porn that they can't even stop on Sunday. My God, can't you even stop on Sunday? It's God's day. Stop it. In the name of Jesus, stop it. 
Woo, it's got quiet in this Presbyterian church. I'm just going to let you know right now, this Episcopal church, quiet. You know what that means? You're welcome. This generation is so desperate, they'll fall for almost anything. Well, what are you talking about, Brother Jeff? Gender this and gender that. Gender me this and gender me that. Who's afraid of a dude in a swimming cap? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What he needs is some guys to make him, never mind. This is back in the day. The dude wouldn't have made it to the pool. Just let you know. Just letting you know. Dude still be crying. I'm just letting you know. He, I didn't say that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> He'd have probably fell down. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know. I know that ain't spiritual, but it's truth. Okay, here we go. I just let you know. Trans this and trans that. You got to get your pronouns right. No, you got to get your soul right. Trans this, trans, white privilege, open door, open borders, is it from the river to the sea. I don't even know what they're talking about. It's following after somebody. I don't have a clue what they're even talking about. Around the very day of the day, Palestine will be free. You don't even know what Palestine is. But you're going to college, so you think you're smarter than everybody. Idiot. Open drug dens, open drug use, psychotic episodes because of new THC levels and dope, more schizophrenia, more deaths and car wrecks, passing out Narcan like it's candy bars. I'm not against Narcan because it saves lives, but I am. I am appalled that we've come to this situation. I'm not, I, I, listen, I'm all for Narcan to save people's lives, but I'm appalled that we've come to this and the church sits. We sit, but I, I don't believe in that. Oh, no kidding. So what are we going to do about it? Well, what can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. First of all, you need to get a prayer life. And first of all, second of all, listen, I, I, don't, I don't mean to burst your bubble. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. And I don't, wanna, I don't want you to ever say, I ain't coming back to this church. Okay, listen. I've heard, listen, I've heard it all 12 years I've been here. Okay, here's the Listen. I'm going to give you the first thing we need to do, and this is real deep, so some of y'all are going to miss it. But I want you to hang on to it, and you'll get, just follow with us, and you'll, you'll catch up with everybody else, okay? I want you to, this is the first point I'm going to make, and this is what's going to change us, and what's going to change the world. And please don't get lost in the weeds, okay? That's why I want you to put your phone up, quit playing with the babies, and I want you to pay attention. <laughs> real deep. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Stand upon the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Open that thing up. What does it say? Somebody says something. Listen, what does the thing say? What does the Bible, when you open the Bible up, what does it say? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I stand upon the word of God. I'm H-A-P-P-Y. Come on, somebody. Number two, I'm going to give you number two. You ready? Number two. This is a tough one. Prayer. Prayer. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It don't do you any good to be mad at somebody who's sinning. That's what sinners do. <laughs> it should, you ought to turn yourself on the inside and say, listen, I'm mad at that devil. I'm mad at that debauchery devil. I'm mad at that porn devil. I'm mad at that drug devil. I'm mad at that drunk devil. I'm mad at that, that splitting up homes devil. I'm mad at the devil and not mad at the sinner because that's what sinners do. Help me somebody. Help me somebody. 
I am appalled of what we've come to. Giving addicts free needles to shoot up. And your tax dollars pay for it. Don't listen, don't listen to them. Don't you have no natural gas stove, though? You're killing the environment. Right, right, right. Interesting. Don't you turn your heater up. You're killing the environment. Hmm. But we're going to open up drug dens and let people just shoot up in the street. You know, shoot up in the street. It's all right, and your tax dollars are paying for it. Listen, I've heard this said. Well, they already know they're sinners, Brother Jeff. You don't need to tell them. Lie. Lie. Straight up lie. From the pit of hell, lie. Well, you're going to have to prove that to me scripturally. Okay, I will. Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, 14. How thou shalt call on him that have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You don't need to tell nobody they're sinners. They already know. No, they don't. Somebody got to tell them. What do you mean they don't know? Here's what I mean. We're living in a generation that most people didn't go to church. Now, I'm, I'm going to call out my niece here for a second. And see if I don't have to get mad and get over it. My niece comes from a broken home. For all intents and purposes, she should not be up here singing and worshiping God. She should not be. But she had at least one grandma that prayed for her and took her to church when she was a little girl. Now, I just know about my mom. I don't know about Wanda. I just know about my mom. That prayed for her and took her to church. And something got on the inside of her that changed her and kept her. And can I share something with you this morning? Look at y'all. Look, look around. Look around. Look around to somebody. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. The reason they're, they are in here, because somebody cared enough to pray. Because somebody cared enough to take care of you. Because somebody cared enough to worship God and say, I thank God that you're going to save my children. Somebody. Somebody got hold of God for you. Come on now. Now, my, my mother, she don't know if it's Sunday or Tuesday right now. But when she was a little girl, she'd take her to church and she'd pray for her. She'd take her to church and pray for her. Tax dollars are paying. I've heard it said, they already know now, brother. You don't need to scream at them that they're sinners. But sure, God, you ain't. Somebody better. Somebody better shout it from the rooftops. Somebody else stand on the tower. Somebody else stand on the wall. Someone got to blow a trumpet in Zion. Somebody got to do something. Somebody got to do something besides I hope that the Lord just sends somebody. Well, I, what, I thought you were somebody. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, I wish God would send one of them whosoever's. So are you. You are whosoever. Go to verse four, four, uh, whatever name, 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? And it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Preachers, preach. Preach the gospel. If I got on this camera, this, this, this one. Preach the gospel. I know you ain't watching because you don't care. But in case you come around this just by accident, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Quit trying to appease everybody and preach the gospel. I don't care if nobody shows up. Preach the gospel. Listen, we must reason with them, Brother Jeff. I heard this said. We've got to reason with them about why Jesus is the Christ. Do I? No, I don't. Because they find, they, they introduce themselves, he introduces himself to them. They find out real quick he's the Christ. I don't have to defend Jesus. He don't need my defense. Well, now, Brother Jeff, we have to speak easy or they'll never come to Christ. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Didn't nobody say, now, Brother Jeff, we really would like for you to come. We're going to give you five candy bars if you come to church for a week. 
Nobody. Didn't nobody give me no candy bars. Didn't give me no gift card to come to the house of God. Didn't nobody give me nothing. I didn't get a T-shirt until Melissa opened up the merch shirt. And by the way, they got $10 shirts in there you need to buy them because the old shirts need about $10 T-shirt. Make a great Valentine's Day present. Okay, listen, listen, if you want to get divorced. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. <laughs> now, we got the reason with that. We got to speak easy to them. Don't, don't ruffle nobody's feathers. No, no, don't ruffle nobody's feathers. Don't upset anybody. Oh, don't upset anybody, Brother Jeff. Uh, now, you got, you can't, now, you can't just talk to people like that. Really? Really? I just, you know, I don't know about, I don't know. I mean, I'm just kind of just sitting here. And I'm just standing here and just noticing the house is full. It's down to me that somebody's hungry for something. It seemed to me somebody hungry for something. Besides just a cupcake. I, you know, I don't eat cupcakes much. I didn't eat them when I was eating bread. Still didn't eat cupcakes much. Just so I'm, you know, I'm just not much on a cupcake. I don't, I don't eat much sweets. No, not my thing. I'd rather have a steak. <laughs> okay, and just, okay. So, so you know, uh, give me two helpers of steak. You can have the cupcake. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Okay, listen. I, cupcakes are fine. I like zero candy bars. That's my. That's my kryptonite on candy. I like zeros. But if I had a diet of zeros, I wouldn't like zeros. I would like a steak, please. Well done. I don't want no, I don't know what the juice. Listen, y'all grow it. Y'all, y'all, it's not your steak. It's my steak. I don't want no juice on my plate that I can pour out. Y'all, y'all got, y'all got, pro, y'all need, y'all eating meat offered to idols. Still, still got blood in it. Something, something wrong with y'all. Hey, listen, listen. I want a steak every now and then. I don't want a zero. Y'all know I like Dr. Pepper. Okay. I've, re- I've li- listen, I-, I have about two a day now. Dr. Pepper is lost. So if you go, you own Dr. Pepper stock, you need to sell. Okay, just let you know. So, listen, I, I cut down, man. I cut down. Water's fine. I like a little. I like the little packets. And, you know, Crystal Light. Shake it up. Drink. Okay, I like it. I can drink it. But every once in a while, I like to reward myself. With a big old Dr. Pepper. Ain't nothing like that first drink that burns as it goes down. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Woo! God is good, especially if it's mixed right. Oh, it got to be mixed right. Come on, somebody. Don't go to some of these places. Now, Casey's is watered down. I mean, you got to find the right spot. You have an A, the roasters are good. All right, let's know. Let's know. Let's Listen. Let's know. Listen. Somebody give me nothing. Preach to me. The Holy Ghost broke my spirit and called me to an altar. Didn't nobody have to beg me to come to some altar? Oh, won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come, Lord? We was already at it. So we were. We, I wish, he'd, I wish he'd quit preaching so I could go to the altar. I don't have any idea what the preacher said. I just need to go to the altar. Come on, somebody. Nobody check on me. See if I'm going to trick me to come back to church the next week. You have to. I was there. I found the well. And I wasn't going thirsty no more. I found, I found my steak place. Well done, if you please. And I wasn't about to go find somewhere else because they're going to mess it up. I want. Brandon and I had to send it back three times. I don't want any pink. Here you go. Does that pink? Anyway. 
Our nursery has to be top notch or nobody coming. Our bathroom's got to be perfect or nobody coming. Our music has to be professional quality or nobody coming. Which is all baloney, which I'm all about. We need to be professional. No, we don't need a bar of soap and a hand towel in the bathroom. Okay, I get it. I get it. We need to be professional, have some stuff going on. I get it. Our children need to be, our parents need to feel like our children are safe. I get it. I understand that. Our bathrooms need to be great. Our nursery needs to be great. Our music needs to be great. All these things the church have need to be absolutely professional. I agree. But I'm tired of tiptoeing around the lost like they have some magical power. Sick of it. I'm sick of it. My God, they need what I have. I don't need what they got. They need what I have. They need what I have. I don't need any more hell in my life. I need God, and they need God in their life. I'm tired of it. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of tiptoeing. I'm afraid we're going to say the wrong thing, and they're going to go to a devil's hell. Where, where are they going now? So we're going to send them to hell number two? What, what, what are we doing? Well, they're going to purgatory right now. We'll send them to hell. No, they know purgatory. Go on. I got to go on. Hurry up, Jeff. All right, let's go. Time for us to tell the devil to shut his mouth. Shut up, devil. I'm not going to feel guilty for the choices men and women make after they have received the gospel in their brains and in their ears. I'm not going to feel guilty anymore. I love them. I pray for them. I beg them to come to Christ. I love them and beg them. But I can no more reach into hell and drag them out or place them into heaven. That is their business and God's business, not my business. It is my job to reach out into the depths of hell and try to drag them. I get it. It is my job to tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is my job to love them. It's my job to rebuke the devil. It's my job to pray for you. I will not sin against you by failing to pray for you. I, it's my job to do all those things. But, baby, it's your job to live the thing. I can't live it for you. I can't make you do it. I can't make you do it. I can't wish you'll do it. I can't beg you to do it. You have to do it. They can either accept Jesus or reject him. I cannot pull them from hell or place them in heaven. I have only an ability to do this, to tell them about Jesus, live a life worth living, and pray that God has mercy upon the lost, dying, and damned of humanity, and pray that God will help us to do something greater than sit by and watch as the lost march themselves to hell. Can somebody just help me a minute? I've got to live a life worth living. We're losing the family. We are so blessed in this church. If you're here and you're sitting by your spouse with your children, you are blessed among men and women. Talking to, I don't know if I was talking to Naomi or not, I was talking to somebody, maybe myself. So blessed to have all these young couples in this house. And all these older couples in this house. And all these people that are, can be an example of who God can do, what God can do in your life. And who God can be in your life. We're so blessed to have them. We're losing the family. Church, we've got to preach the gospel. All of it. Not just the grace. But all of it. Preachers have got to preach the gospel of Jesus the Christ. I've grown tired of preachers that are cute. And not anointed. I'll say it again for the hearing impaired. I have grown tired of preachers that are cute and not anointed. They dress cool and have cute little sermons. They don't have enough anointing to keep you off X or Instagram during church. God ain't moving enough, the Holy Ghost ain't moving enough in the service to make you put that thing away. Your addiction is greater than the anointing that most preachers I know, I've seen, I've listened to, have. Instagram and X, they have the formula. They have thousands of, the repeat of rehearsed mantra. They call them saved, but nothing's changed. We got quiet, golly. 
Y'all hear that? Y'all feel that? Boom. Woo! They step up in there. God, there's change. There's been no repentance. There's no life-altering meeting with God. They're just as lost before the preacher told them they were saved as they were before they were ever went to the altar. But how do you, you're not the one to judge. I know I'm not the one to judge, but I'm a, I'm a pretty good fruit inspector. Something got to change from the inside. Can we just, church, can we just preach the gospel? Can we quit trying to be all whatever we are? It's sad. I'm a minister of the church of Jesus Christ. I don't even know what we are. So we're trying to get people to come. We don't even know what we are. Are we the church? Are we the clean club? What are we? Are we 18 to enter, 21 to drink? What are we? What are we? What are we? Come on. What's, what are we? My God in heaven, come on, somebody. Can we just preach the gospel? Can we just preach the gospel? Can we just start watching families come to an altar and change their destiny? I'm talking about mama and daddy and the kids coming to an altar and having their life and their destiny changed. You show big on this altar stuff. I don't Make the pew your altar. I don't care. Turn around in the pew and make it an altar. I don't care. Make your steering wheel your altar. I don't care. Make it, uh, make it a place that you can get along with God. It doesn't have to be these benches. It doesn't have to be these two-by-fours and plywood. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that. It has to be some place that you can set aside alone for God. That is your altar. Somebody's got to go to an altar. Can we just start feeling sorry for the, those sinners trapped in sin? Feel sorrow for them. Can we cry out for those who have backslidden into a place they never thought they would go? Can we start seeing marriages healed and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ? Can we see families healed by the power of the Holy Ghost? Can we just see our lost children come back to God, saved and set free and delivered? Can we just preach the gospel? Time for a riot. But what is a riot? It is disturbance of the peace. Carmen said in Riot, the album, the righteous invasion of truth. Bump, 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 we need a riot. Y'all don't know Carmen. We've been sitting for too long, sitting for too long. We've been frightened for too long. It's time. It's time for a riot. Oh, I can see you're all fired up and ready. Let's run through a troop. Let's run, let's run over a wall. Let's do it. Yay. Go, Jeff. Time. It's time. It's time to show the world what and who Jesus died for. It's time to show the world what and who Jesus is coming back for. Hell and Satan, they don't fear the church. They fear an awakened church. One without, the, you know, the one without spot or wrinkle, that one. That's the one they, that the hell and the devil fear. They fear a praying church. They fear a church that has expectations for the glory of God. It's time for a riot. Revival or nothing at all. Revival or nothing at all. Not a meeting. Not a conference. Not a get-together. Not a women's event, not a men's event, but a revival. A Holy Ghost, fire-baptized 
revival. Oh, somebody better help. A revival of those who have gone cold in their spirits. Not a meeting, not a movement. Not a meeting, but a movement, sorry. Not a preacher, but a savior. Holy Ghost, come. Convict men of their sins. Draw men to God. Comfort the lonely and the sad. Raise up. Raise up the men and women to preach this gospel with power and anointing. Raise them up, Father. There's got to be somebody. I want to outlive me. I want to outlive me. Raise them up, Father. Raise up men and women. Stir the gifts that have been left behind, ignored, and despised. You know, there's some folks that despise the gift and calling that God has on their life. <laughs> Sweep through the annals of time, God, and do it again. Do it again. Don't get tired. Are y'all tired? Say, do it again. Oh, that was weak. Say, do it again. Thank you. Do it again. Do it again. Sweep through the annals of time, Father, and do it. Time for a riot. Time for a riot. Well, listen, if you guys would you please come up. Guys. Let them get settled so y'all aren't watching this. Guys, there's a lost world looking for a savior. There's a lost church looking for the real. <laughs> I'm not here to make you feel bad about yourself. Here to stir you. Here to stir you. I am not, I am not against you. For you. I'm against the devil. In every shape, form, everything. That he stands for, I stand, I have potential to oppose. There is nothing that I have common ground with the devil. Nothing. Not one thing does he have that he can offer that I am interested in. Well, hate's a strong word. I mean it. I absolutely hate the devil with everything in me. Well, you shouldn't hate. You shouldn't have that in your life. I can hate the devil I want. God's cool with it. God's cool. So much so that he says, hate the world and the things that are in it. Attraction is strong, and it will draw you if you don't hate it. If you just put up with it, it will draw you out. And when you are drawn out by your own lust, then sin, when it is finished, is death to you. When men are drawn out by their own lust, they are tempted and they fall in that temptation. When sin is completed, death is the result of it. So why would I, why would I appease that mess? I scream and I beg and I shout and I 
I am for you. Don't give in to the devil. Don't allow him a foothold in your life. Don't allow him in your marriage. That's a good place for an amen. Let me say, well, it's too late. <laughs> Get him out. Get him out. He will destroy your marriage and walk over your dead corpse and spit on your head as he walks through. He don't care nothing about you. Guys, look at me. I don't know what David talked about yesterday. But I know this is, I just I know my spirit from talking and to God and just praying. And we have some men in here that are so frustrated with their jobs, their families. You walk in, you kick the dog, you slap the cat, you spit in the fish tank. so frustrated. The devil just trying to get you up. Listen, if he can get you out of the house, he can crumble the rest of the house. So his job is to attack you. And if I can get you to quit, if I can get you addicted, if I can get you away, the rest of it will crumble away that quickly. Tell me now. Tell me now. I'm so blessed in this church to have all you men in this. So blessed. God, if you'll sweep through the annals of time and do it again. Do you remember my story two weeks ago about Billy Graham? Put my knees in the holes in the carpet. If you did it once, God, do it again. And if you don't mind, use me. If you did it before, God, do it again. And if you don't mind, Use me. Stand to your feet with me, please. It's time for a riot. But a riot doesn't start on the outside, it starts on the inside. If you're just pleased as punch to the way you're living your life, then hallelujah, with God love you. We'll let you teach a class. But there's got to be a churning and a burning on the inside. Somebody's got to have enough. Someone has to say, enough is enough. I'm done with it. I'm done with the devil jacking with my family, and I'm done with the devil jacking with my church. I'm done with it. Somebody's got to get stirred. Somebody needs to have an internal riot and disturb the peace that's going on in your life. Last thing I'm going to stop, I'm going to say, and then I'm going to stop, and we're going to pray. Christians, children of God, hear me. I know we are supposed to get along with men as peaceably as possible, as the word of God says. I get it. I get it. I don't want you going to go and burn down AutoZone today. Okay? Don't go burn down Carl's Jr. today. That's not what I'm talking about. talk about on the inside of you when you've compromised so much to have peace that you don't even know what you believe anymore there's got to be an internal riot that starts 
I've had it. I'm done. I'm done. This is not going to be who I am the rest of my life. I've had it. I'm going to serve God with everything in me. I'm going to have a riot in my life, in my life, in my life, in my life. If you are in this building and you don't know Jesus, my heart breaks for you. Because you don't even know who you are. breaks for you this morning because your soul is bound for a devil's hell. You know why it's not hard for me to worship? I'd give a quick answer. Because I remember where I came from. I remember when he reached for me. And I remember when he raised me. And I remember when he set my feet on the solid rock of his word. And I remember when he cleansed me. And I remember when he called me. And I remember when he did all these things in my life. I remember. And so when they start playing and tears start running down the sides of my cheek, it's not because they sing so well. It's because he is so awesome and he is so great. And he's done everything for me. And I don't know how to repay him. And I have no way to repay him other than to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't deserve it, but thank you. And you're standing here today and you don't know that feeling. My heart breaks for you. Because you don't know. Jesus I don't care what they told you if you don't know him you don't know him if you're in this house and say brother Jeff I don't know him if you raise your hand I would just love to pray with you I'm not going to embarrass you I want to ask you to have some guts awesome very good to keep preaching. I'm going to keep screaming as loud as I can scream. And I'm going to keep yelling and telling the devil, back up devil. Back up devil. Back up devil. This is my city, not yours. God has given us the city. It's not yours. Can you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, as no hands were raised today, God, I pray, God, that all are right with you. God, I give you praise in this house today. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the message today. I thank you for the word of God today. I thank you for your people today. Holy Ghost, I don't want to stand there and have the Lord say, do I know you? I want to know him. I want to know him. Father, I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. You're dismissed. Please don't, please don't disrupt Christians.